Welcome to Inside Healthcare. A disturbing new study finds that one in five adolescents in the United States now have prediabetes. The study just published in the December issue in the Journal of the American Medical Association Pediatrics finds that prediabetes is estimated to affect 18% of adolescents ages 12 to 18 and 24% among young adults ages 19 to 34. Health experts say that the numbers have risen over the past decade, putting young Americans at risk for developing type 2 diabetes, heart disease, and other serious health conditions. In fact, until recently, teens almost never got diabetes, which is why it used to be called adult onset diabetes. The CDC says that lifestyle changes such as diet and exercise can prevent or delay type 2 diabetes and other serious health problems. And diabetes is a serious health problem in this country, especially among the Hispanic and Latino community. In fact, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention estimates that 50% of Hispanic people in the United States will develop diabetes. Son, love is like the ocean. You have to tread the oh, waters. Oh, Dad, that's not the kind of help I needed. Jessica, will you go to prom with me? Yes. Thousands of teens in foster care can't wait to share their first with you. Welcome back to Inside Healthcare. The holidays can be a challenging time for anyone, but for those with dementia, it can be a very difficult time for the individual and for their loved ones who care for them, who are often their spouse, their son or daughter. Joining us now to talk about dementia and the holidays is Ruth Helmgren with her, her artist, senior living, and you know personally the challenges of caring for a loved one with dementia. So I really appreciate you joining us and sharing your advice and tips with us. It's my pleasure. So thank you. So to begin with, um, what exactly is dementia? What, what do people know about dementia? Okay. Well, dementia is a, a large term, and it's used to describe cognitive decline or mental processing changes that begin to interfere with the activities of daily life. And I think we often hear about Alzheimer's, but there's other forms of dementia as well, or different uh -huh. types of dementia. Yes, yeah. Um, dementia is the umbrella term. If you think of it like this, um, when you say fruit, you think of apples, um, oranges, bananas. So when you think of dementia, oh. That is the overall umbrella term for a group of different um, progressive diseases, the largest being Alzheimer's, but there's also, also vascular dementia, um, Lewy body, frontal temporal, all for various um, reasons, and each has their own sets of symptoms and, and things of that nature. Some symptoms that people may experience, and, and just to caution you on this, um, people say in the dementia business that if you've met one person with dementia, you've met one person with dementia. Oh, so it varies as much as the individual and the disease and stages. Yeah, and because the brain is such a complex and individualized organ. So some of the things that a family member might um, become aware of is that their their family their family member, loved one might have um, forget things or may ask for information to be repeated over and over. Um, they may have uh, challenges with um, time and actually space, you know, where they are in space. They may have um, decreased judgment. Um, so they may not be making the best decisions. Those things like leaving the oven on and uh, oh, which forgetting could be dangerous. things. Dangerous. Yeah, yeah. It, it is dangerous to find Tupperware in the in the hot oven. It can be very challenging. Mm. <laughs> Been there. So, but it is. Um, it, that's what dementia is, and those are just a few of the kinds of symptoms that come along with it. How can you tell the difference between? Um, dementia and just maybe signs of aging, like, oh, I, I can't remember a certain word or something like that. Mm -hmm. Is there something that is more telling of what is more serious and should be considered and 
treated or diagnose mm -hmm. the dementia? Yeah, for sure. I think as we age, we all tend to um, forget things, maybe forget an appointment or forget somebody's name or reach for a really simple word and you just can't find it. But later on in the day, that word comes at you with a, a hammer and you're like, I can't believe <laughs> I couldn't come up with the word fence yeah. <laughs> or toy. But the, really the difference is those things happen to, as part of normal aging. Our processing may be just a little bit slower and um, we may have very full hard drives and it might be that we're not hydrated or we haven't exercised or, or we have poor nutrition. Those things or kind blood of, pressure may have right. Blood that pressure, yeah, yeah, physical conditions that may decrease your ability to, to hold on to things, medications, things of that nature. Whereas when people have something serious that might need to be looked at, it's more persistent. Um, when folks may need to um, be seen because it is interfering with their daily life. And that's really the difference. We have annoyances, forgetting our keys, forgetting where we put them, but we know we forgot our keys and they're somewhere. In a, a dementia situation, you might have people that put their keys somewhere in a very unusual space and you won't find them wow. until you happen to go to that place for something completely different like bread. So. And as we mentioned, the holidays in, in of in themselves can be stressful and a, a trying time for everyone yeah. or anyone. But with someone with dementia, what kinds of things come up with the holidays, and especially for loved ones caring for someone with dementia? Yeah, I think being a caregiver is hard enough. And then you add in holidays, you add in the pressure and stress of people visiting, uh, decorating, shopping, all of those things raise the stake. Also just the emotional piece for both the person who may be experiencing dementia as well as the caregiver and the family. The loss of, of parts of that person and you compare it to um, Christmases or holidays of the past and it really does uh, start to, it really can be very hurtful. You're, you can begin to grieve. Um, so it isn't, a, it isn't always a happy, jolly time for everyone, as we well know. Um, so it's really important that if you're a caregiver to number one, be sure you take care of yourself. Because if you don't put your own mask first, on, as they say in an airplane, you can't help anybody else. Oh, so good make sure yeah. that you're, you're taking care of your own health, that you're getting out, that you have respite care. People may come in and care for your loved one while you're gone, or if you need to, you know, or if they're living in a community setting, make sure that other people in your family or you enlist others to pick up the ball as well. And um, as I mentioned at the top of the intro, that um, you, this is something that you know personally as well. Mm -hmm. And are you willing to share with us a little bit about your personal experience? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I did um, get into senior care and senior living partly because of my mom's dementia. She's been gone for six years and she did have Lewy body. Um, she also had a lot of other physical complications. A beautiful woman, and she... Like her daughter. Oh, well, thank you. She was a gift all the way through the process of her, of her illness. Um, and you say a gift. A gift, yeah. because we try to really take in the moments when we would connect. And this is something that I would, I would highly recommend during the holidays. Keep things simple. I remember bringing in like the most simple craft. It was a child's craft, but my mom loved crafting. So even though she, she couldn't physically do a lot, it didn't matter. It wasn't about the craft. It was about doing something together and having meaningful moments like that. Mm. So those are the things that I recommend. Another 
part of it is during the holidays, you have family members that may not have seen your loved one mm -hmm. that are coming in from out of town. And I think the best thing is to prepare them in advance because the changes may take them by surprise. Oh, yeah, good point. Yeah, so making those phone calls is going to be important, letting them know that there are changes. And I would keep um, gatherings small, depending on your loved one's stage of, of where they are in the progression of dementia. Um, some people can handle a large and noisy crowd, but as people progress in dementia, they tend not to uh, feel good in that surrounding. Oh, okay. And it good may be agita agitating to be in that. So we try to be cognizant of where they are so that we can meet their needs. Make sure they have time to download. Sing songs. I was just gonna say, mm -hmm. I think music is one of those things mm -hmm. that takes people back to a time when they remember things and stuff. And yes. No matter how old and how serious or their health is at that time too. Exactly. And an, another thing with dementia is when you've got someone who may not remember the nephews or the cousins, it doesn't matter. And they may call them by their father's name oh. or because they see the family resemblance, They're may, they may be living in a different time and place in their mind. So why not just ask them about it? You know, how is it living on the farm? You know, they're living in a community right now. Well, tell me about the farm. What was that like? Your dad sounds like he worked very, very hard. Just have a conversation. It doesn't have to be based on what's happening today or who you are. It's that you're there and being a part of their world. Oh, really good advice. I really appreciate sharing all of that. And, yeah. Um, as I mentioned to you, you're with the Artist Senior Living. It's a memory care facility mm -hmm. opening in the Twin Cities next year. Yes. And just briefly tell us about Artist Living. What's it all about? Mm -hmm. Artist Senior Living is a new community to Minnesota uh, coming in from the eastern seaboard. They have a number of communities there. Um, memory care only. And our perspective of caring for people is that we're caring for the person. We're not caring for the disease. So we want to really know who they are. We take a really deep inventory of that person, who they are, who they were, who are the important family members, what's their favorite things. And those are the things that really cue us in on how to care for them best. Because if we don't really know them, how can we really care for them the way they need to be cared for? Mm -hmm. And there'll be more news coming up when you're opening and things like that. Yeah. And if they want more information about artists or about memory care, yes. they can contact you at your website. Yes, definitely contact at our website. Give us a call. Um, if you have a desire to learn more tips for uh, navigating the holidays with a loved one with dementia, feel free to reach out. I'll be happy to send these along to you. Oh, that would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. And final tips for our viewers that you can leave us with? Especially uh, if they have someone in their family that, with dementia yeah, during the holidays. Yeah, I would say, you know, drop your expectations and just enjoy the moments because things are going to go wrong. Things are going to be blurted out because there's no filter. Um, um, there's things that will happen that you just have to laugh off and you just have to be there and be present and, and love on each other. And share that gift. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Ruth, this has been awesome to have you with us and to give us some insight and some good tips for all of our viewers out there that might be dealing with this. So oh, you're you. very welcome. It's my pleasure. And we'll have to have you come back again. Thanks. Later. I yeah. appreciate it. And we'll be back with more right after this. Vision loss is not something that you feel until it happens. Most people lose their vision from diseases like macular degeneration and glaucoma. Not at birth. With macular degeneration, you lose your central vision. You have a blind spot right in the center of your face, so I can't actually see your face. So even that little circle in which I could see became a big blur. I was 65 when I first was diagnosed with glaucoma. There were no symptoms. I had no headaches. Three million Americans have glaucoma, and half don't even know it. 11 million people in the United States have macular degeneration. You lose mobility, 
Independence changes your entire life. So many eye disorders can be treated if caught early. My husband tells me that I have beautiful brown eyes, and I don't want to lose that. Make a plan today to get your eyes checked. Visit brightfocus.org to learn more. And welcome back to Inside Healthcare. Joining us now is Dawn Redding, and she has created Gloves Up. It looks like we got a toy here or something. Yeah, you do. So, um, yes. first of all, glad to have you with us. Thank you. Thank exactly. you. Exactly. What me. are Gloves Up? What are these that we're these looking gloves. at here? Well, gloves. These gloves are a gift of encouragement. So, rather than sending somebody flowers or sending them food, or if you wanted to send them something as an inspirational gift, you would send them a pair of boxing gloves. Um, it's a way to let them know that you're in their corner and that you're cheering for them and not to give up the fight. So, so how did you, you created this, how did you come up with this idea and why? Um, I work for Alliance Bank and I have been in banking my entire career. And I've had a customer call me one day and tell me that she had cancer. And she was a dear friend of mine, and she was a feisty little thing, and she just kept saying, Dawn, I'm a fighter. I'm not going to let this beat me, and I'm going to... I'm going to beat this. And I kept thinking of what can I send her? And I wanted something really unique, something different. And I kept thinking of a pair of boxing gloves. And I could envision the gloves hanging next to her bed. And every morning when she would wake up, she would see these wow, gloves. I mean, it just came to you. It just there. And unfortunately, I didn't do it. Um, I went home. I looked for that pair. I couldn't find the pair that I really kind of envisioned and that what I wanted to send her. And so unfortunately, I didn't do it. And about six months later, my mentor in banking called me and told me that he had a malignant brain tumor. And he told me that he had about 18 months to live. Um, and I knew he wouldn't beat the cancer. I knew that his fight was to live the next 18 months. And so again, I thought what a great gift would be to send him a pair of boxing gloves that he could leave with his family um, just to remember those 18 months. And so at that point, I figured, you know what, I need to do this. And so I used some of my resources that I have made over the years, and I came up with these gloves. And um, we just started the company last March, and it's been amazing. <laughs> So how do you go from an idea that you have <laughs> and a vision, yes. and how do you get to this point? Right. Yeah. Um, it actually took me it, about... You make it look easy, but I'm sure it was, it was not, not easy at all. No. <laughs> no. Um, it took about three years. Um, one of my clients, um, he is a hat manufacturer, and he makes kids' hats and mittens. And he used to make everything here, and then he, over the years, started importing things. So I worked with him. We worked with his factories. Um, it took us a long time to get the samples back and forth. We finally came up with the gloves that we liked. Um, we used his sores, so the bags are made here internally, and so it's a package that, that is sent out. And um, people order those online, and just like you're going to order flowers. And we hand write the message, and um, we package it, and we send it to the person that you're sending them to. And it, you know, it was interesting because I um, I wanted like that gift when I wanted to be the person that sent the really cool gift, the really this unique thing. This looks like thing. a pretty cool gift. And so it was ironic. I, I didn't have a, I didn't have my story, but everybody around me had a story that I wanted to send them for. And it doesn't matter if they have cancer. It's for anything. Right. I mean, it right. doesn't even have to be a heart disease. I mean, it right. could be just they need a right. pet. Yes, and you know, uh, not thinking of you kind of a thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not all stories are are sad. I've had people order them, um, um, you know, kids that are going off to college. I had oh, a mom. She ordered a pair that her daughter was in medical school, and she wanted to hang them in her locker. So every day during her rounds, that she opened up and saw these gloves. And why red and, and the name and all of that? The the reason I went with red is I wanted it to be neutral. I didn't want it to be you know, specific. I, I didn't want them to be pink just for cancer. I wanted them to be so that you could use them for whatever, for whatever it is. And red is really kind of that boxing theme. The gloves up, I mean, everybody has a fight. Everybody's fight is different. And, you know, I think if you really think about it, you could probably think of five people right now that, Absolutely. that you want to send that gift of encouragement to. What a nice idea, especially coming up with the holidays. Holidays, and yes. And this is something that was your idea to help to mm -hmm. cheer up these friends and, and colleagues that you knew, but then you also had your own personal right, issue. Did. Why don't you tell yes. us about that? Um, very ironically, we, I kept my pitch on this was, you know, I don't have my story, but everybody around me has a story. Um, we launched this, it was the end of March, and then in July, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. So 
all of a sudden now I'm fighting my own story. And um, again, I'm, I'm cancer free. It was, you know, I no was very, very lucky. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And you know, it's, it's interesting because one day I came home and my son had taken a pair of the gloves and he had my family all sign them. So just like a oh, cast, wow. they autographed the gloves for me. Um, my grandma's 96 years old. She signed the gloves. Everybody signed them. And so now I have my own pair of gloves hanging um, in our family room. And they mean so much more to me than it did even before when I wanted to start this company. So it's, I mean, I, I have to tell you, I go home every night. I have orders online. We have had repo repeat orders. And they're just in your garage? They're in my garage, yes. Storage, yes, we have 4,000 pairs of boxing <laughs> gloves in our garage <laughs> as we speak. Um, but the, sto the cards, the messages that I write every day, and, you know, as... as Scary as it was for, for me, um, it seems like everybody has a fight. And some of the fights are, um, unfortunately, they're not going to win the fight. You know, we send a lot of gloves to hospitals. Um, we, unfortunately, one of, we've been sending quite a few pairs of gloves for somebody that lost somebody unexpectedly. And, you know, the spouse or the family has to move on and, and continue to live life, which is a fight every day without that person. Mm -hmm. And so people have been sending gloves for that. I mean, the reasons are endless. Yeah, is there one, that you, or one or two Just that you stories. can share with us? Yeah. Um, I do have one that um, friends of ours had bought a pair of the gloves at a silent auction and sent them to somebody that was going um, in for treatment. And she has a, a rare form of cancer. And they met her in a um, parking lot the, right before she went in for her first treatment and gave her the gloves. And then she ordered a pair for somebody else. And she's in the middle of her treatment now. And she, for some reason, I needed to call her. Um, I think there was a discrepancy on the address. And, and we started talking, and she told me all about her story and how she brings these um, gloves with her every day to the treatment. And she said, everybody talks about them and where she got them. She's like, I can't tell you the meaning that these gloves have. And, and that's it. The meaning can be whatever you want it to be. When you send them to somebody and you write down your message on the card and they look, of it, look at the gloves, that's what the meaning is. And it was interesting. We were just at a party. Um, a friend of ours is a five-year cancer survivor. And we were at this party and this woman came over to me and it was her. And here she was at the party telling somebody about her gloves. Oh and gosh. they said, they are here at this party. And she came over to me, and we were in tears. And Amy was just I was going to say, I can't imagine just, what that was like. It was like. amazing. Yeah. And she just recently again reached out to me and said, as soon as I'm done with my treatment, I need to get involved with this, and we need to get these out. And and, and they're kind of soft. I mean, they're like they're, you get You can regular. actually put them on. They're, the, there's three sizes. We have the small pair. We have a medium and a large. And the large is like a man's size. And then the medium is more kids and a so woman's size. you can almost size. like hug them and stuff and, and hold them. them and yeah. Yes. That's wonderful. Um, you know, the, the intention when we first started, too, was to be, um, to do this online as a website so that you have that one gift that you can send to somebody. And it's really starting to go in different directions. Um, we've partnered with the Hudson Hospital Foundation, and they have been purchasing the gloves and giving them to the oncology department. And they're giving them to their cancer patients on the last day of chemo and radiation. And oh, that's, that's nice. been amazing. Um, people even some of the recipients have like found us online and reached out telling us how much these gloves mean to them so it's I mean it's been amazing and there's so many different fights um, that you know this there's I can envision these in so many different places and now you also have it um, at retail in some stores yes local stores. yes we recently were um, went into Kowalski's we're in all 11 stores of their gift shops. Um, that's new. We just went in in October. Um, we also went into the Hudson Hospital gift shop there and the gift shop there. So it's it's starting to really take off. So wh what do you see for the future for Gloves Up and for <laughs> for it spreading cheer and, yes. and encour encouragement around outside mm -hmm. of here, even the Twin Cities? I would love, I mean, we have been going um, to other states. We've had quite a few people that have sent them to other states, and now those people are reordering. I would love to get into more hospitals, into more programs. Um, when I first started the program, you know, there's cancer. Um, you hear so much about 
cancer, mm -hmm. unfortunately, and this has been a great thing for it. But there's also so many more fights. You know, I look at mental health, we look at eating disorders. There's, there's just so many programs where what this is such a great inspirational gift, you know, that you can give somebody that they can take a look at this and just remember to keep fighting. Can we ask, what is the cost? Yes, um, the small pair is $28. The medium pair, which this is the size medium, is 50 Oh, these are the medium. This is the medium size. <laughs> there is one bigger size, which is great for when you want to autograph them. Um, sometimes people oh, go in as a group, yeah. and then like the office or you know a bunch of people would sign the groups. Um, and those ones are $62, the largest pair is. So you can order them online. That does not include shipping and handling, but we can ship them anywhere in the United States. And if someone is interested in getting more information about Gloves Up mm -hmm. or looking how they can go about mm -hmm. doing it if they don't go to Kowalski's or yes. some other place, yes. you said you have a website? We do have a website, yes. And um, our website is glovesup.net. And they're also, um, you know, please, We'll go there, check us out. You can see stories on there. You can see more about us, um, other examples of where the gloves have been used. Um, you can also follow us on Facebook and on Instagram. So we try to post our stories there for people who are willing to share with us. Final so. um, comments that you would leave with our viewers about Gloves Up, about any t sort of encouragement for people, no matter where what they're going That's through cool. in their stage of life or whatever they're dealing with. Um, I can say the the stories and the responses that I have from these um, have been absolutely amazing and the feedback that when somebody opens these um, it, it, it brings a smile to them, it no, brings goosebumps to them. I mean it's, it's just that surprise gift that there's so much meaning in this little pair of gloves that are here. Well as soon as so. I met you and learned about this I thought we got to have you Thank on the you. program to we can share that with our Thank viewers you. and Thank let them you. know about this too. Yes, right? please get the word out. I mean it's all been word of mouth and um, we'd love to see it in more locations, we'd love to see it in more programs so please pass the word. Well it's really been a pleasure to have you Thank with you. us Thank and you. we appreciate you taking time out. I know Thank you. everyone's very busy so thank, thank you for you. being with us. I appreciate the opportunity. And congratulations on being a thank cancer you. survivor. One year survivor. Yes, one thank year. you. One Good year for you. Spent. Just was one year, so thank well, you. I appreciate it. I think it's it. wonderful, so thank you. Thank you. Thanks. And we'd like to thank you for joining us. We hope you join us next time on Inside Healthcare. We'll see you then, everyone.